Hi, welcome. It's time for my Sunday town hall and a campaign update. So, welcome. I am Susan Maud Bookser Lahaki, but uh, just write in Susan Bookser. For short, when you go to write me in for president on your ballot when you go to vote. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. So yes, I am running for president. And um, if you want to find out how to spell my name, I mean, you can, I guess, look here on Facebook and see and write it in. Or you can also go to my website. And there you'll find out how I'm working for you already. So my website is Susan4USA.com. That's Susan the number four USA.com. Uh, I am on the road. I'm in California. I'm in my birthplace. I'm near where I was born. And, you know, some people, that's normal. But for me, I've really, you know, after I was seven years old, I was never near where I was born. So uh, I always have to come and visit periodically. And, well, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I would stop by. So I was born on Travis Air Force Base in California near Sacramento, near San Francisco, and near my favorite forest, the Redwood Forest, Mere Woods. So that's my next stop on my agenda today. I need to see some redwood trees and um, yeah, just uh, breathe the air there. So I'm looking forward. I am home. Yeah, I passed by Travis Air Force Base earlier and um, yeah, I mean, I don't recall being there. I was just born there. And then shortly after my birth, I think our family moved to Mather Air Force Base, which is uh, north and a little east from uh, Sacramento, or from uh, Travis, I should say. And that's where I, I stayed, uh, Rancho Cordova. And so I spent the night there last night and was just hanging out in my old neighborhood and seeing how things have changed. They, of course, when they decommissioned Mather, they they took away all the fences and they put up new homes and they they tore down all the military homes. So none of my memories were really there, but my, my schools, my elementary and my um, kindergarten were there. So I visited them and uh, my um i had first grade in california and then after that as some of you know uh our family went off to guam for two years so second and third grade was on guam and then uh when i returned to the continental u.s i was in fourth fifth and sixth grade in uh pittsford new york so yeah um I had many different uh, experiences in elementary school, to say the least. But anyway, that's uh, I'm I'm excited because I'm here in California, and um, getting re-energized. And yeah, the redwoods are are beckoning me, so I'm gonna go and see them, and I'll take some pictures and post them later. Because, you know, they have the biggest trees in the whole world. And uh, although I don't know if I'll get to the biggest one, I'll try to I'll see if I can get one online. Or maybe I even have to make a video. So let's see what happens. But I'll do my best to get a, a tree on on uh, on the uh, Facebook page here. So, yeah. Anyway, um as far as my campaign goes, I am still uh, running, of course. You can still write me in, of course. And a lot of states, um, they don't recognize me as an official write-in, but you can write my name in anyways. And uh, I'm going to be suing because I am an official candidate, and they cannot block me as a citizen from running, and they cannot block you as a citizen from voting for a candidate that you know is a recognized candidate. So I am recognized in many states 
and there are a few states where I'm not. Sadly, there are a few states that don't allow write-ins, and I have not gotten around to write that lawsuit yet, but I, I need to. What I can recommend there is maybe try to do a provisional ballot, because there on the provisional ballot, they might give you that uh, blank space where you can put in a write-in candidate's name. So um, I would recommend that. But uh, anyway, the real point is you should vote for who you want to vote for, whether it's me or anyone else. Just vote for who you want to vote for. So now, uh, of course, um, getting on to politics, I, I have been busy this week, so I'm not sure where everything is, but I, I doubt that all the wars have stopped. So uh, again, I'm calling for a ceasefire. Also, here in the United States, um, we have to stop the gun violence and stop uh, killing each other. There is no need to do that. But I know part of the problem is poverty, part of the problem is hate and fear and domination. And, um, you know, a lot of these issues are more men issues. So, you know, maybe it's time for a, a strong man to step forward and, and, you know, lead the men out of this territorial, my God is better than your God situation. You know, I, I mean, I'm doing my best to do it too, but, um, you men don't always listen to women. So it might need a, a woman to, uh, or a man to come in and say something to get you all to stop attacking each other. I mean, or maybe is this so into your animal, your human animal that men have to compete and determine who's stronger than who and bully and all of this, is that really necessary? Or can you rise above your natural instincts and just be friends and friendly and helpful? I think it's possible. I don't think you have to attack each other. I don't think that all these sort of gangs and things need to be going on. But I do know that our country and the Democrats and Republicans have put together a lot of laws that don't make sense, that make it easier to be an illegal immigrant than it is to be a legal one, and it makes it easier to be an illegal immigrant than it is to be a U.S. citizen. Going on like food stamps and stuff, getting help from the government. It's easier if you're a foreigner right now. Now, I didn't put those laws together. A lot of you didn't put them together, but the people we voted in did. The Democrats and Republicans did that. So what I can tell you is that if you like the ridiculous laws that we have, then continue to vote for those two party people, you know, just go ahead and vote for them. But if you're tired of it, vote for anyone else, just anyone else, anyone. It cannot be worse. <laughs> and the more new people we get in, the better chances we have of changing our country in a good way. Because they'll be beginners and they'll also want to change things, you know. They're not accepting the status quo that the Democrats and Republicans have put out there. So vote anyone other than those two parties. Anyway, go to the FEC website, go to your Secretary of State website, find out who's running, ask your neighbors, go do a search online, see who's running, and and find out. So FEC stands for Federal Election Commission, so go to their website to see. There's there's like over a hundred presidential candidates. I'm just one of them. But there, there, so that's 99 more that you can go research and, and figure out who you like. You still got time. So I don't know if you heard, but apparently there was a person who went to go vote uh, in a southern state somewhere. And was it a southern? I don't know. Maybe it was not a southern state. I don't know. I'm going to maybe Michigan. I, I can't remember where. 
Anyway, he went to go vote, and apparently somebody voted for him. <laughs> in early voting, somebody else went in and voted. So after a long struggle, they found out um, that there are two people, supposedly, with that name. Uh-huh. Like, I believe that. Okay, two people with that name living in the same place. Uh-huh. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> but anyway, supposedly there are. So they let the, the real person vote. Now, because he was the second one, he had to provide ID. Now, I don't know if the first guy had to provide ID or not. Uh, but, I mean, he could have a fake ID or whatever. But anyway, um, the news did cover this story. I'll try to find it and post it later. Uh, so they're making it seem like it was a junior-senior thing, but that's not the case. Because junior-seniors, you know, they usually put that in there, especially when you're voting and stuff. So this is, you know, the media is trying to cover their tracks. They're trying to help their the people who pay them, and that's the Democrats and Republicans. So the media is working on their side to cover the story to make it look like they're innocent. But both parties are extremely guilty, and they're coming forward now telling us how guilty they are, but trying to make it look like, oh, we didn't know what was going on. Oh, poor us. So I call on the Supreme Court to make a ruling. You know, you have my lawsuit. Come on. It's, it's enough now. So one thing I found out recently by watching some other videos of uh, other candidates or people that are familiar with a, a group that I'm spending time with um, is that uh, a lot of our computer uh, software and our election machines are from China. <laughs> yes, folks, we are using Chinese voting machines. So, I mean, China has only one party, right? I mean, we have two, suppose, I mean, we have more than two parties. And no one says that you have to be in a party to even be a candidate. So, um, I don't know. I do know that the Democrats and Republicans have been working together for a long time, manipulating us into becoming a a um, Christian nationalist country. And this is not acceptable. It clearly states in our um, Constitution that we are not that. We do not have one specific religion or a belief of any sort in our government. People have religion government does not but we've been forced into this by the powers by the democrats and republicans and there's there's different people in both parties and there's a group that's working together the christian nationalists and they're in both parties and they're they make it seem like we have a choice but they've been manipulating our votes so um now that we know that the Chinese made our machines um, or our software and we're using it and they have a one party system. I mean, technically we have a one party system too. It just seems like we have two, but we, we, uh, because the media won't cover anybody else, everybody only thinks there's two parties and this is just wrong. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. There's nothing fair about our election system currently. So, um, anyway, I just found that also kind of funny. So, you know, they're pointing fingers at Russia and they're pointing fingers at China and Iran and all these other places. Well, you know, those three are now working together too, because we keep, uh, causing them to, um, have sanctions, you know, so of course they're going to work together. So anyways, um, you know, we, we got, uh, this election coming up, uh, unless the Supreme Court comes forward with my lawsuit and says, yes, Susan, we need a new way. Let's do it. So unless they do that, you know, we're, we're, our votes are just going to be manipulated anyways. So, 
You can go in and vote, but I'm actually going to recommend that you don't go in and vote because the less people that vote, then the, um, they don't have a quorum and then it's not an official vote. And if you walk in the door, then they can manipulate your vote. If you don't walk in the door, they cannot. So, um, part of me says, you know, stay home, don't vote. I mean, it doesn't matter anyways, they're going to pick whoever they want. So whether you go in or not, but if you do go in, vote for somebody entirely out of the two big parties, anyone, anyone, just vote for someone else, please. Because there's, we, there's only one way to stop it. And it's, you know, through laws, we have to sue and they need to be caught doing illegal things, which they are. And, um, we just can't keep, um, can't keep this going because our voices are not being heard. First off, I just wonder how many of you prior to the election, so maybe like a month ago, without asking, did you get mail from your government, from your state, telling you what's going to be on the ballot? Did you get an information packet? Do you know if you have to vote on uh, bridges or new school money or new taxes for roads? Or are you going to be changing your state constitution? So if you got nothing like most of us, this is unacceptable. They are spending much too much time on this voter registration list. They need to be informing you, the citizen, of what is coming up, what you need to vote on, and telling the newspaper and telling the TV and your, your radio stations and everything. It's not, that's not from the government. That is a filter through which things get manipulated and not told properly. So they need to inform us, the public, of the things that we are having to vote on. They need to do that. It's their job. They work for us. The governor works for you. The Secretary of State works for you. The county clerk works for you. So this is my thing. Hold them accountable. If you did not get anything, then there's no vote going on. So don't go and vote because you were not informed. You were not informed. No, no, it's not acceptable. They cannot go through a private entity to tell you what's going on. They need to go directly to the public. They work for you. Hold them accountable. Write them a letter. Say, this is unacceptable. This is a fraudulent election. Shame on you. Shame on you. You're cheating. Shame on you. So, um, yeah, um, this is where we are. Uh, the other thing... Hold them accountable, really. They work for you, your senator, your president even. They all work for you and me and, you know, it is just time to hold them accountable. It's not acceptable that they don't hear us and that they just vote the way that the lobbyists want. That's not how it works. So anyway, um, yeah, Supreme Court, I ask you to make a ruling on my lawsuit. You know, as well as I do, that there's a lot of fraud and manipulation going on. And this is not acceptable, not for our U.S. citizens. So getting back to, um, to that, I guess, yeah. So that's part of it. The other thing is we need a ceasefire around the world. It's time for peace. 
It's time to stop the fighting. We all deserve to be here. All of us. All of us. And my goal in the new year, which will be the year leading up to then our 250th anniversary of our country, is to start focusing on the communities. As I'm driving around, I get a feel, you know, at first I was looking and seeing, you know, old buildings that are disheveled and, and streets that aren't good and stuff like that. I mean, some of the streets are very dangerous. So we need to fix the dangerous streets immediately. But then after that, I want to give the community an opportunity to decide. To decide. What, what look are they going for for like the next 50 years? Do they want that rugged uh, pioneer look? Or do they want a new crisp modern look? What is their goal? And then give them the necessary tools to achieve that. Because I, I like the variety. I loved going into some of the really small towns where there's like 10 people living there. You know, they're cute. They're a little rough. But they're cute and I like it in the dirt roads. If they're happy, I'm happy, you know. So uh, anyways, I would like to have our communities, our towns, especially villages, become more of themselves, figure out what they really want. And so this is this is uh, one of the things that I'd like to do in prep for our 250th anniversary of our country. Um, yeah, because I, I think uh, some places need help. Some places they don't have money. And I noticed some roads are really bad where the potholes are like three, three feet wide by two feet. And they're, you know, like almost uh, nine inches deep in some places. This is unacceptable. So what I do when I'm driving around and I'm looking and seeing how things are, I think, you know, if I was a mom with a baby that just fell asleep, is this where I'm going to be driving? Or if I happen to be driving here, will my baby wake up if I drive on this road? And sadly, a lot of times the answer is yes. So this is not acceptable. Places have to be accommodating to mothers with children. And also, a lot of places need to be accessible by handicapped people. That means people in wheelchairs or people who are blind. So we need to work on this, folks. It's, it's not fair to others that we, we don't uh, make things more useful, more helpful to the disabled. And um, yeah, so anyways... Um, this is uh, another thing that I want to do for our country is focus on the community and let the community uh, have their expression. You know, it's a, you know, we'll say like a 40 year expression. And then in 40 years, we can go in another direction, you know. But anyway, um, yeah, so ceasefire. That's where I was. And that calls for a ceasefire here in the U.S. I, I call on all gangs to just stop it. Just stop it. Um, I heard someplace that there are some private militias being started. That is actually unconstitutional. There are no private militias. That's a gang. You're not a militia then. You need to talk to your uh, governor. The states are in charge and the Congress is in charge of the militia. And they get to dictate. And so the militias belong in the towns and in the communities and then in the state. <coughs> Absolutely. And then how it works is that if there's an emergency, the president has the right to call up the militia to service. So then you become the United Militia. But until then, you are a state militia. So state militias can exist. And I highly recommend that they do. And you know, one of the other things I want to do is give our state militias a, a house where they can go and practice shooting. So that we're sure that you are okay to shoot, that you know how to shoot, and that you shoot accurately. And, you know, we might want to think about 
giving the sort of, how can I say this? I, we need to, once we get the militias going, we'll say after a year of training, then maybe we can reverse things and we won't need a police force or even a sheriff's force. The militias in the local towns will be in charge. It'll be an extra little job for all the folks that have weapons that want to be involved. And therefore, we don't need something called the police and we don't need something called the sheriff. Because, you know, I've been living here and I lived in Switzerland too. And I have to admit, although we, we had them also in Switzerland, I had some issues there and I had some issues here in the U.S. And you know what? No one, not the sheriff and not the police, found the correct answers for the things that came up. No one tried to solve the issues. And um, they were happy to just make up a story and then walk away and say, okay, case closed. This is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. What I would say is we need a, a group of people who will be the town recorders. So that could be what a sheriff and a police does now. Instead of going around or trying to find the bad guys or whatever, we got the militia for that. They're trained and they're all over. That would be all able-bodied men and some able-bodied women. But um, the, um, the police can go around and notice, oh, there's a big pothole there. And then they call the highway people and they say, hey, you got to get over here and, and fix this up. Potholes should not exist longer than, than a week, maximum two weeks, period. They need to be gone. So, you know, there's no excuse for this, these bad roads and uneven pavements and things like that. That's what the police should be doing. And the signs, as you drive around, in some places they are covered by tree branches that have grown or weeds that have grown and you can't see the instructions. Or some have been uh, knocked away and never put back up. Some have the, the screen taken away. Some, we got people who are going around shooting them and, and putting holes in them and you can't read them. So this is also unacceptable. So where, you know, that's what the police need to, uh, when they drive around, they need to be looking for that sort of stuff and reporting it and getting it fixed. It's not acceptable. The streets have to be safe for vehicles. And then we've really got to get a grip on the, these lights that people are putting on their vehicles. They are so distracting and you cannot see because the, the paint from the road has worn away somehow. I don't know why it's so difficult to paint once a year in the spring, new, new paint on the road. Or maybe it should be now, maybe it should be like an August activity so that it's nice and strong for the dark period when we're driving, you know, in winter. Um, but uh, it's, the roads are just atrocious. Shame on, shame on the police for not reporting them. Shame on the sheriff for not reporting them. These things cause accidents and shame on the governors for not taking care of their roads better and shame on the governors for not painting their roads every year. I think August is a good month for that because as soon as you put it down, it's going to dry, right? Because it's nice and hot. So let's make August the month where we put the paint down so that it's nice and strong for the winter and then you know, when it's so bright out all the time in the summer, we don't need it so much, but winter's coming again. And some of the streets, you can't see even where the road is, you know, you, it's just terrible. So I don't know who came up with this concept. Democrats and Republicans. Actually, I know where the Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, they came up with it. So we need to hold them accountable. They need to put paint on the roads so we can drive safely. They're supposed to care about their citizens, but so far 
what I see is they care about their pocketbooks. And this is not acceptable. So we need to stop sending money overseas and we need to focus on our, our infrastructure and on our people. So anyways, um, gun violence, yes, we need to stop that. So as you know, I have a solution. I talked a little bit about it just now. So we need to stop the, the guns and shooting. Then we need to um, uh, what else? Yeah, talk peace. So uh, you know, I think uh, China is ready for peace. One thing I found out recently is that the United States not only does not recognize um, Palestine as a country, but other countries do. We also don't recognize Taiwan as a country. I was surprised to hear that. I've been to Taiwan, so I was like, huh? Why are we not recognizing Taiwan? So anyway, I mean, I recognize Taiwan as a country. So, you know, folks, we got, we got lots of confusing things going on. I don't know what our elected officials have been doing for the last 50 years, but um, we got big problems. So uh, peace is possible. I can sit down with all the big players. There's room for all of us. We need to stop treading on treaties and we need to make real treaties that are, are binding, that are, are good quality. Especially we need a treaty with uh, Mexico and well actually with all the, all the Southern um, America countries, South American countries plus uh, Central and North America. We need to all get together and we need to sign a treaty between us stating that if somebody comes into our country looking for asylum, that they have asylum as soon as they leave the country, that they were leaving from and arrive in a new country. So like if somebody says that they need asylum from China and they fly to Peru, in Peru they have asylum. They don't get to walk 15 countries to the United States and say, oh, I'm seeking asylum. No, no more. So we need a treaty. That's one of the first things I'm going to do. And um, yeah, that's uh, peace is possible. We need to respect boundaries. And that's, that's where we are. So um, I don't know. Um, None of you really had any questions for me. I got some hellos and things like that, but no questions. So uh, if you have anything you want to discuss, go ahead and put it in the, um, in the comment section and let's, uh, let's talk about it. But that's, uh, I guess that's, that's it for me for today. Um, campaigning I'm I'm you know going around the country still meeting with people and um, I'm going to be I believe on something later today and then also on a radio show maybe so uh, I am around um, I might put out of uh, some sort of news a little later too uh, just because I'm in California, and so it is a newsy day for me. But uh, right now, I'm in California, so you on the East Coast, it's uh, like 4 o'clock, I think, in the afternoon, 4.30, something like that. And here it's lunchtime, so I'm going to go have some lunch, and then I'll be back. All right. So thank you very much for stopping by. Um, vote for me or don't vote for me. Just vote for somebody you care about if you're going to vote. But, you know, like I said, if you don't want them to manipulate your vote, then don't walk in the door. Just don't vote. And that's a vote also. And if they don't have enough people voting, then you know what? Oh, thank you. <laughs>
it's 4 p.m. Uh, if you don't have enough people voting, uh, then they don't have a vote, right? They don't have a quorum. So I, I think, uh, you know, it's so hard to know what to do. I know. And I wish I could advise you better. But I think uh, you have to think about yourself and what might be best for where you live. Okay. So I wish us all good luck <laughs> in this election time. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. So thank you for stopping by. My name is Susan Maud Bookser Lahaki. If you do vote for me, the minimum you have to write is Susan um, Bookser, and you spell Bookser B U C H S E R. And if you want to find out more about how I'm already working for you, uh, go to my website. It's susan4usa.com. That's susan the number four usa.com. So thank you very much. I wish you a good day wherever you are or evening. Bye for now.